Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Yes, today is character building. And uh, for those of you who were looking for me to do anything on Morkbork or Merkbork, this is the day, okay? Uh, <laughs> and I am sure there will be very few people who are even remotely interested in Morkbork or Merkbork. But um, let me give you a, let me present the opportunity to try to convince you that Maybe you should give it a chance. Maybe you should give it a chance. Anyway, I'm going to put up a poll. Feel free to take part in that poll. And then uh, once we get that going, uh, we'll be able to get straight into this. You're going to need some dice, people. I need you to get some dice, okay? Uh, you need all your polyhedral dice. You will be rolling dice galore. Which is pretty much how you make a character with uh, Mork Bork or Merk Bork. So you will need dice. So please have dice close by. And uh, we'll get straight into this, shall we? Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about role-playing games. And this game is Mokbok or Merkbok or whatever the heck you call it. I'm, I'm not really sure, <laughs> and, and I'm not going to pretend that I really do know. Um, I am trying. I am trying. I know for a lot of people, this game is um, just ridiculous. Like. To be able to read this and understand it, it's really difficult. Like the book itself is like an art book. I don't know, I've done a review on it. And I'm going to be covering uh, basic character creation for Mork Bork or Merk Bork today. That's what we're going to do. Before I go into that, I want to very quickly say that this is a dark game. Uh, there's a lot of death that can take place. And I would uh, definitely say that Mork Bork or Merk Bork is really a combination of two games in my in my in my head and that is it has the the basic quality of beg me basic dungeons and dragons okay early D, &D but it has the tone of warhammer 40,000 or dark heresy set in a fantasy world where really the chances are you are probably going to die in your endeavors and survival, it feels more, I guess, more Mad Max than anything else. So before we do that, you'll find in the description, you'll find a, uh, a fillable PDF, a website that will give you a lot of assets. But instead of just generating this randomly using a random generator, I know what you want. You want to be able to actually just make a character. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do today. You will need dice. You need six-sided dice. You will need some eight-sided dice. You're going to need some dice handy because... I don't plan to roll a dice. I expect you, as the the audience, to do that for me, okay? And um, if people aren't rolling dice, then we're not getting very far. So let's go straight into the first task that we have with this with this game, and that is let's get you to the character sheet and over to here. So this is the character sheet. There are two different types. This is a fillable PDF. You can see right now, looking at the character sheet, that really there's not much to it it's very very basic and we have fred huber in here thank you fred huber is a patron supports me running this uh this program every single week i really do appreciate the patrons for doing so um uh, fred you are right it is difficult to find players to run a game like this i absolutely agree david david um rosu how hi how are you doing today has been character building yes look we're doing character building for the next seven weeks we're doing more book character building. Uh, Naku Kun, is I, did I get your right name right? Yes, the art does look sick. Yeah, it, it looks really naughty too at times. I walked into the flags and walked out uh, without it stopping. <laughs> uh, dear. Yes, I can believe you. I can believe you. Right, so let's start off with, let's deal with a character name while we get the dice rolling. So hashtag, what will... Be the name. Now, you don't have to give your character a name. You, your character might die very quickly, but I would say at least give it a name, okay? Um, there's also a section for giving you some sort of description. We're not picking a class today, so that we've got no class. So no class features. This is just the, the basic character that you can, you can start off with. So none. You don't have to play this way. You can use a character. Okay, but and today we're doing the non-character one. 
And then there's a few things we need to fill in, which we will do. Uh, so while you guys are coming up with that, we're going to start looking at what we need to start doing in terms of the first part of our character creation. First off, when you have the, the Mork book or Merk book book, you want to turn to page 19. It's really hard to navigate through this thing because it's really quite confusing because things feel like they're all scattered everywhere. So page 19 of the Mork book book, unless you're using the PDF, which is probably easier to read, um, that is where your basic character creation is. Okay, So you want to give it a name. You need to write down a quick description if you want to, but you don't have to write down a quick description of the character uh, because essentially that character might die very, very quickly. So page 19 is where you want to be when you're starting out with this. So we could just say something like, um, I don't want to die today. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so that's our first entry that we'll put in there. Uh, next, we need to roll some dice. You need two six-sided dice, and you're going to multiply that by 10. That's how many silver pieces you get. You can buy gear. Sometimes your game master will let you buy gear when you start out. Sometimes they won't, but it just depends on the scenario of your adventure. Hashtag roll uh, two d6 for silver. So that would be your first step. And you'll see it's not really obvious because the layout is a bit wet, wacky that, that you're supposed to be doing that on page 19. But it is. It's, it's actually written into the <laughs> because the layout's so bizarre. It's, writ, it's written into the sort of description of the, the character, which is basically you're just no, a nobody. So um, have, a, have a think about rolling two six-sided dice. If you don't roll six-sided dice, then I will have to roll them. Uh, I don't want to have to do the work, but, you know, if that happens, that happens. Rook, sir, hello, no problems. You're back. Trying dual streaming, and it um, popped popped the bead. Oh, dear, that's a, that's a shame. Um, Wilbur is a pretty cool name. Okay. I'm going to take Fred's name and Fred Hubbard's name and your name. So I'm going to, put, I'm going to combine the two. Uh, so we'll have a combo name. So let's go over here. So... We've got Fred Huber's already rolled us some dice, which is great. That means we're going to get that started pretty quickly. So let's go with Wilbur. Wilbur. Uh, hat's going to come off. It's so hot in here. I'm sorry, people, but I have to do it. Uh, Will. Wilbur. Kane. Kaney. Wilbur Kaney. There we go. Wilbur Kaney. Okay, so... If you roll, so Fred Hubert has rolled a 5 and a 1, so multiply those together, okay, and that gives us 6. Multiply that, or so, sorry, add 5 and 1 together, get 6. 6, multiply that by 10, that gives you how much silver you have. So we have 60 silver pieces. We write that down into the section on that, right down the bottom here. That's what we can spend, if our game master will let us spend any anything. <laughs> if you're if you're waiting for me, da, 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 no problems. Um, no, no, it's my phone is just a bit slow. Next thing, you get equipment. So a water skin and equipment. So the first thing you want to write down is water skin. So in the equipment section, water skin. Always have a water skin, otherwise you die, right? And you're probably going to wind up with some other things as well, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Uh, next, our equipment we'll deal with in a second. We're going to roll that all up. Food. So you get a D4 days worth of food. So you have to roll a four side of dice to determine how many days worth of food you have. The pointy stick, hashtag. Roll a D4 for the days of food okay so did I did it go in yes it did okay cool so four sided dice determines how much you get in terms of food derp has rolled a one so we get one day of food okay well done your rolling is very impressive <laughs> food one day. 
All right, next. What is our next task? Well, we're going to start rolling up our equipment. And we have three charts that we roll on for our equipment. We roll once for each of these charts. Uh, the first chart is D6, and the other two are a D12. Uh, so this is what we do. Hashtag uh, roll a D6 for first piece of gear. And this is all on page 19. So everything that you've needed to know so far is actually on page uh, 19. So you, you don't have to worry about running from one page to the other yet. That doesn't happen yet, okay? We're all still on the one. You're only looking at those two pages, page 18, page 19. That's it. Equipment. So you rolled a four, no, so a four. Okay, so let's say the four, look at number four, and four on our, our D6 table is a sack for 10 normal sized items. So we just add in sack, sack bracket, 10 items. We'll just put it in short, oops, items, that's not a word. Add to word, items, items, try again, Fred, items, there we go, right, cool, done. Next, um, we got a, f now that was, was that one for it yet? We got that one, now we're going to start rolling some 12 sided dice, ha eh, eh, hashtag, roll um, a, a d12 for more gear. Darn it, come back here, no, don't go away, what is, what is going on here? Okay, for more gear. All right. Okay, all right. So you rolled a two. I'll take your first one for the D12. So the two that um, Fred Huber has rolled uh, comes out at presents plus four torches. So that's that's a bit of a surprise. So presence plus four. We'll get back to that. And torches. Okay. So it's gear. So uh, torches bracket get plus four presence. I think that's what it's supposed to mean. Uh, presence, we are we, pres, no, that's not the word, presence, here we go, okay, <clears throat> so presence is not there, it's for the torches, all right, with no way to light them, <laughs> well, that's, that's always a possibility, it's always a possibility, so we've still got another 12-sided dice roll that we need to have to do, determine the next thing that we're going to pick up. And since Fred Huber's already rolled us a three, we go to the, we went, I was looking at the first table of D12, and now the second table of D12, that's the table I look at, and since he's rolled a three, we get a small but vicious dog. <laughs> uh, you don't have to put that in a bag or a pack, by the way, people. So, small dog. Small, vicious, <laughs> oh dear dog okay and it also spells out like what you roll for hitting uh, hitting and how many hit points it gets and all that sort of stuff i brandish my unlit torch menacingly yeah scrape it on something maybe that'll work so let's put in our dog stats um it's a bite is only obeys you <laughs> it's bite is uh, d4 so bite a d4 damage and we need to have our hit points for the dog it's got no modifier so that's damage by damage d4 hp uh, now the hp for the dog is a six sided dice plus two so i'm going to get you to uh, to do a, a roll for the for that roll D6 
for small small dog HP hit points there we go <clears throat> It might well be. Um, I think what it means is that when you're using, because you're going to use, sometimes if you're using stuff to look, so if you're looking around, so for example, presence is going to be more related to something like you looking for something. So presence tends to, to work that way. So that means that when you're using a, a torch to look around and spot stuff, since darkness is a big factor, um, you'd be getting a plus four to your presence when you're using your torch, probably to look for something. Okay, so we got a two. So you roll a two on the six sided dice, so two plus two for the um, small dog gets a four. So we have our small dog calculated. So that's all of our equipment done, for those of you who are wondering how that works. Next, uh, you get an un if, so if you get an unclean or a sacred scroll, so an unclean scroll or a sacred scroll is basically like spell casting. If you get one, which we didn't didn't get, then you need to go and roll a d10, and you need to go to page uh, 35. Page 35 is when you'll find all of the unclean scrolls and the sacred scrolls. So if you get one of those, you roll how many times you got a unclean scroll or a sacred scroll, whichever one it was. You roll a 10-sided dice, you look at the tables on this page. This page right here, okay? This is the one. But we don't have one of those, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do need to worry about having a weapon, because we should have a weapon. So when you're starting out and you're dealing with a weapon, you only get one weapon. You get one piece of armor, and you get one starting weapon. And the weapons are on page two hundred, uh, on page 20 to 23, and you need to roll a 10-sided dice to determine that. So I found my game supply box, 40 sets of, <laughs> all right, okay, all right, good, good, good. Hashtag, so roll a d10 for your starting weapon. Okay, so if you roll a d10, I will go to page 20 and we will have a look to see what weapon we get. Now, <laughs> Um, I guess the first thing to understand is the table that you get is spread out over three pages. <clears throat> you look at the first number beside the item, and then it gives you in brackets usually a dice number. So it might be a D4, a D6, a D8. That tells you how much damage that weapon does. That's it. Okay, nice and simple. It's not complicated at all. You've got a six. All right, good. Let's uh, let's go and have a look at number six. Number six on our table would be on page, I believe it is 21 in this case, and six is a sword, and a sword is listed as a D6. So that's what we get is a, a sword. So we go up top here. You can have more than one weapon, but we only start with one weapon. We'll put it right here, sword. And for a sword, it is a D6. That's how much damage it does. Okay, you just roll that, and we're all good. Okay, so that's that part done. We still need to do armor. We haven't got any armor yet, and that's rolling a D4, so a four-sided dice for seven, please. Point to the stick. No, I know, I know the stick is that one. Hashtag. Um, roll a D4 to get armor. That's if we can get armor. And there, there we go. <clears throat> so if you're looking for armor, where is the armor? You need to turn to page 24 of the book. Okay, on page 24 you'll find armor. And it kind of looks like there's two people fighting with a sword, two guys, but maybe some French French people uh, in the backyard having a duel, and there's armor listed. Now the problem with the armor is it's it's kind of it's kind of fluffy in that it gives you a range. That's what you're dealing with, is a range. Got a one. So one means no armor. If you roll a one on the four sided dice, there's no armor. If I roll a two, you get light armor. If you roll a three, you get medium armor. And if you roll a four, you get heavy armor. Okay. 
Um, and then of course shields can come into play, but usually you buy those. So that means we have no armor. None. None. We are armorless. There is no armor. Armor, <laughs> the idea behind armor is it tends to uh, reduce the amount of damage you take. But in this case, we don't have armor. We are armorless. Dungeon Master Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you doing? I'm going to be playing Mork Bork some point now. We're not finished. We've still got a few more things we need to fill in here. We don't have any powers. We have none. No powers. None. We are not playing a class. We don't have powers right now. All right. Next. Determining your abilities. These are the things that you use most of the time. Okay. And that is your agility, your presence, your strength, and your toughness. Toughness is exactly what you, it sounds like. Strength is exactly what it sounds like. Agility is exactly what it sounds like. Presence covers everything else you can imagine. Okay? You wind up using presence for a lot of things. <laughs> so that's on page 26. So you need to turn to page 26 and you're going to roll three six of dice four times. <clears throat> um, AC or hit me, please. Yeah, pretty much. Just don't get hit and you don't have to uh, to reduce damage. Exactly. Don't get hit. Yeah. <laughs> so hashtag um, roll three D six for uh, abilities, ability scores. And really what we are doing is we're doing ability scores. We're not going to be using the ability scores other than to determine what our ability modifier is, but we do need to have them. So rolling down the line, I hate to say it, people, it's just like Beck Me Basic D&D, you're rolling down the line for these, okay, on page 26 of the book. And uh, as you bring in your numbers, I will plant them in, okay, I'm, I'm waiting for you. Trepidation is high for me. Because this makes a big, huge difference. But it's also hilarious. Okay, next. So Fred Huber has rolled a 2, a 2, and a 6. 2, 2, and 6 is a 10. So what we do is we look at our table for 10. And a 10 gives you a modifier of 0. So that means our first one, strength, has no modifier. That means when we make an attack with our sword... We're going to roll a 20-sided dice and add zero to it because that's what you normally do is you add strength to your attack. I'm going to go over the rules of the game some other time. I'm not going to do too much with that today. Okay, Damien. Damien has rolled a 2, a 6, and a 3, which will apply to our agility. So a 2, 6, and 3 comes to a grand total of 11. And at 11, 9 to 12 is 0. Okay, all the modifiers for your abilities are right there. So that's agility 0. It's quite common to have... Nothing, you might have a minus one, you might have a zero, you might have a minus, uh, a plus, plus one. Very rare to get plus twos. Okay. I rolled enough. I'm sure you have. I'm, I'm waiting for one more, two more rolls. I need two more rolls to get this done, people. Because we need, we need some presence and we need some toughness. So, um, Damien, maybe Damien's going to have to roll some more six-sided dice for us. That would be good. I'd appreciate that. I'm sure everybody else would too. Okay, so I'm just going to put this here, um, so you understand how your attack with your sword works, a d20 plus zero, did I get a zero in there, zero, yep, and then we go comma damage, there we go, that's good. This is a good um, exercise to know which set of dice to, to, to retire. Fair enough. Damien's rolled a 1, a 2, and a 4 comes to 7. So we look for the modifier for 7 on page 26. 7 is a minus 1 for our presence. We need one more, Damien. Okay. So the, the modifiers are different in this game to what you're used to. So if you get a 1, one to 4 for your uh, ability score, then that's a minus 3. If you get a 5 to 6, that's a minus 2. Then a, a 7 to 8 is a minus 1. 9 to 12 is just 0. Uh, 13 to 14 is a 1. 15 to 16 is a 2, plus 2. And 17 to 20 is a plus 3. 
And Damien, great, awesome. So you've rolled a, a six, a four, and a four. Comes to 14. So a 14, as I just said before, plus one. So we got good toughness, plus one. Okay. We are not finished. Going back to our little task. This is a breakdown here, showing you exactly what you do each step of the way. So write down the ability modifiers into your character sheet. You do not write the ability score. You only write down the ability modifier, okay, which is what I just did. Now we determine hit points. Now, how many hit points do we get? Well, we get a D8 plus your toughness modifier, which right now is a plus one. So we're going to have to get some eight-sided dice out, people. Hashtag. Roll a D8 for hit points. Hit points. Okay. So once you've got that D4 fired up and rolling, we'll be doing well. Uh, now, normally, there's a couple, there's, there's really only one other, two other major things we need to do. Getting equipment and then rolling for how many omens we get. And then at that point, we're pretty much finished and there's nothing left to, to cover. There is a, a table on here that says miseries, but miseries, you don't have to use miseries. You can. There's other, I'm not going to go over miseries because there's no point unless your game master is going to use miseries. The, the, the game is pretty miserable as it is, and you don't necessarily have to have miseries going on. Uh, and we have none here for now. We'll just put that in as fill it in. Seven, seven. Both of you, obviously seven was the number you needed. So for your maximum hit points, you get seven, your eight-sided dice, plus your toughness modifier, which is a one, gets your maximum hit points is eight, your current is eight. You're wondering, where's my armor class? There is no armor class, people. You don't have armor class. It doesn't work that way. The game is different. It's not like that. But we're not finished because we haven't got our omens. So hashtag roll a D for uh, D2 or D4 oh no no it's D2 to get to get omens uh, omen omens okay so you get one or two omens depending on what you roll so how do you roll a D2 you pick up a six sided dice and if you roll a one two or three it's a one if you get four to six on a DM six-sided dice, then that's two. If you're using a, a four-sided dice to determine it, if you roll a one to two on a four-sided dice, you get one omen. If you roll a three to four on a four-sided dice, you get two omens. Okay, so we get two omens as determined. So um, two omens is good. Omens are good. They will keep you alive. They will help you succeed when you would fail. By even odd. Okay. So we've got two omens. So you're determined how you have, how many omens you've got. You've pretty much done everything you need to. Now if we had armor, depending on the type of armor here, we would click on whichever, whatever tier dice we should be using here. It tells you what that what they are. So leather armor is the is the D2. And if you're dealing with medium armor, you know, things like mail and scale mail, it is going to be the D4. And if you have heavy mail, like heavy armor, like split and plate mail, then that would be the D6. But that's all you need to do with the armor if you had armor. We don't have any armor today. We are armorless. At this point, you're going to ask your game master, can I buy equipment? And you can buy equipment if they'll let you buy equipment. You're not always going to get to buy equipment. But the whole point of having starting silver is to buy equipment. Because Mork Bork or Merk Bork, unlike other modern versions of role-playing games, it looks very much like basic Beck Me D&D, where you are your equipment. Your character is defined by how you play your character, what you do with your character, not the special abilities that you have, but also the equipment that you carry. You can only carry so much gear, okay? And that's very important to remember too, because... How much equipment can we carry? Well, you'll see right under the equipment area, it says strength plus eight items. Okay, what does that mean? 
whatever your strength um, modifier is, plus eight, okay? It's not your strength score, it's the modifier that you will add. Or you can classify it as um, a D, DR plus two. D don't worry about that for tests. Just don't worry about that bit. But the amount of gear we can carry, okay, we can carry eight items. We have one, two, three, four, five. Five things, okay, six, seven, eight. These would not be used because we would not be able to carry them. It would cause too much problems, okay? That's your restriction. So we can carry three more items. We've got gold. We can buy gear if we want to, as long as the Game Master says we can. So on page 25, the pink and black page, page 25 is where all the equipment is. So you talk to your Game Master and you say, okay, what would I like to buy? Um, can I afford it? You'll find the silver goes a long way. So let's buy some equipment. You've got three items left to buy. <laughs> Hashtag. What do we buy? Okay. Now I can read out what's here. Hello, Derp. How are you doing? Derp is also a patron. Thank you for being here. Um, we have a sack for more items. Yes, we do. We do. So the sack allows us to carry more items. That's true. <laughs> that That's true. But I'm only going to give you three, okay? <laughs> Just going to give you three. So three items. I'll read them out. You decide what you want. So we have a backpack, a bear trap, a blanket, caltrops, chalk, chewing, to, chewing tobacco, yeah, I know, a crowbar, uh, crucifix silver, crucifix wood, uh, dried food, um, exquisite perfume, um, fire steel. If you want to light that torch, you might need some fire steel. Grappling hook, hammer, heavy chain, iron nails, ladder, uh, lantern oil, lard, that's fat. Okay, large iron hook, lock picks, magnesium strip, <laughs> um, manacles, mattress, meat cleaver, medicine bag, metal file, so a metal file proved to be very useful. Josh and his metal file. Uh, Dungeon Master Josh used his metal file to create. <laughs> uh, you'd have to, yeah, and then I'll just, I'll leave that. Mirror, uh, muzzle, uh, a noose, an oil lamp, poison, that's black and red, is, there are options. Um, preserved corpse, if you want to take a corpse of you. Not probably going to, it's going to probably take up more than one slot, the problem is. It's not a normal sized item. It's a corpse, come on. Um, a rope, a small wagon, well you're not going to be carrying that. Uh, a tent, toolbox, a torch, sack, we've already got a sack. Um, salt, scissors, scroll, uh, a sharp needle, we've already got a water skin. And then we have weapons, so you can get things like a battle axe, a bow, club, crossbow, flail, a femur, which is basically somebody's bone, it's worth nothing, you can, you can get one for free, um, hand axe, knife, mace, uh, short bow, short sword, sling, staff, sword, war hammer, whip, and I can't even pronounce that, so I won't try. You can get arrows and bow, bolts if you need to, um, if you want surfaces, we don't need to worry about surfaces. Uh, you can buy some armor if you decide you would like to have some armor. We can buy one what, tier one or two at uh, 25 silver, or we can buy tier two, two to three at um, 40 silver. Okay. You can buy a dog that's trained, a wild dog if you're stupid, uh, a horse, a mule for carrying stuff. You can even have a, 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 a rat that's tamed, a tame rat. You want a tame rat? I don't know. You tell me. So you tell me what you want, and I'll write it down. And um, first come, first serve. Okay, so you can have a banana. Fine, that was easy. Banana, ban, banana. All right, well done. Um, Egyptian swallow with two coconuts. Well, come on. It's I've I I I, I allowed you to have the banana. We're not going to do that one. Magnesium strip though, you can have that. You might find a, a use for that. Do not hold it in your hand. For real people, those things will, will uh, burn your hand right off. Mag. Magnes. Magnes. 
Why am I having problems with this magnesium strip? Magnesium strip. Did I get it right? No, it's not a Z, it's an S. Magnesium. Magnesium strip. Magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. Yeah, okay. Magnesium strip and uh, chalk larder. Chalk, you're going to have to chalk. And that's it. Done. Done. That's, that's how simple it is. Now, a sack does allow you to carry additional items. Now, if you remember what the sack said, okay, it said the following so that you don't get confused because I know a lot of people will. Okay, this is this is how our sack works. Uh, where is it? Sack for 10 normal sized items. So instead of only being able to carry eight items, we can now, now carry 10 items. You see that formula there? Okay, so we can actually remove two of these X's. So we can have two more items instead of just eight. Okay. We won't cam we won't count a sword. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we get two more. So well, let's add here. Somebody said lard. We'll get some lard. And what was the last item on here that somebody put in? Muzzle dog. We've already got a dog, so don't worry about the dog. Forget about that. Um, a hammer. Now I believe is it twenty five? There was a hammer here. I'm pretty sure. Yep, hammer. We can get a hammer. Now you're probably looking at this and saying, well, this is just sucks. How are we supposed to do anything if we can't get all the really useful stuff? This is the nature of Mork Bork or Murk Bork. What you do is as a group, you work out what each other have in terms of equipment and you make sure that within the group you have the items you need to achieve something. So that doesn't mean that one character needs to carry everything. Instead, okay, I might take the these items, but somebody else won't worry about carrying um, torches or lard or hammer or chalk or magnesium strip or banana, okay, because you've already got it. You've already got it. Now, we could say the small dog isn't something you're really going to have to carry. It probably can walk around, so we'll take the dog off. And you get one more item. How's that sound? Nails. We'll get some nails. Not snails, but nails. Okay. And you want to buy some armor? Well, we can do that. That won't be added to our equipment list. So we can buy some armor. You can buy pretty good armor. 40 silver pieces would probably do that. Um, but we do need to sort of determine, like, how much have we spent so far? I'm going to count it up. Probably not. I'm not here. You can do that, okay? Not my problem. So we'll buy the best armor you can. So that means you can have tier 2 and tier 3 armor. Tier 3 armor is pretty good. Like, you know, you, you're not messing around. Tier 3 armor is essentially heavy armor. So we can take this away and buy some armor. Would be sensible. We want to live as long as possible. Heavy armor. And we'll say we get some plate. Plate. Okay, so now we check this box. We can now use the D6 to do deal with damage resistance. Okay, we're reducing our damage when we take damage so that we don't die. That's what armor does. It reduces damage, doesn't actually um, change how well you get hit or not. It's just reducing damage in some way. Okay, subtract the D6 from whatever the damage is. All right, let's have a look at the chat, and uh, I think we've just about done. Uh, lots of good ideas here. Crossbow. Now we could buy a crossbow, but we, we're we're kind of pushing. We'd have to we'd have to decide to get rid of something. I'll tell you right now. Um, we wound up using presence for ranged attacks. Like a crossbow would be presence, so it means we wouldn't be very good at it. But we're only bad by one point so it's not it's not the end of the world uh the rat <laughs> so so for those of you who are thinking oh my gosh mork bork is so hard to figure out and and understand i totally get it i did sit down for a long time and write out this list of how to do it so that i knew how to, to deal with this character building process i've done it before i've built characters before 
but you do need to have a way of sort of step by step working your way through that. And that's the process. It's actually very easy. Really, um, it's a lot. It's a. It's really light on rules. There's not a lot to remember. You can really boil down the rules to two pages, and um, you can build a character. And I've done it in a live stream, and we've taken forty minutes to build a character, step by step, showing you. You could probably build this character in a lot less time than that. You could probably build a character in the space of five minutes, and you're ready to go. And which is a good thing because you're probably going to die. Everybody dies eventually. Like, let's get real. It's going to happen. The day comes. So, so for those of you who are thinking, there's no way I should ever consider playing a character like this. Uh, no, no. Look, it, honestly, um, Mork Bork or Merk Bork has classes. I just have built a character without classes because you can, okay? And we'll come back and we'll cover every single class in this book, walking you step by step through the process so you don't have to use a random generator and you'll build out your character. Remember, your equipment is your character. It's very important to make sure you get your equipment sorted out and choose wisely what you want to have because you do need to spread your equipment over. So this book, even though it's virtually unreadable and undecipherable, um, I'm gonna decipher for you, okay? And um, I wanna thank, uh, in particular, Stuart. You know who you are, Stuart. Even if you're not watching right now, he's the one who sent me the book, said, would I review it? I've reviewed it, I will cover it. I'll do the rules, so we'll actually look at the rules in the future. I don't know that it'll be this year, but I will eventually. So next week, uh, we will be dealing with a new, uh, a new character build for Mork Bork. The f I believe it is the Fanged Deserter. There's a class in here called the Fanged Deserter. And that class, if I can just quickly find it for you, since the rules are scattered in the most peculiar way all over the place. The Fanged Deserter is this. So the Fang Deserter has a few other things that you would not normally get based off the flavor for this class. Okay, so we're going to deal with that next week. And I'll go through each one of them bit by bit. But I also wanted to just point out that this book is really, if you look at it ultimately, this plays a lot like Beck Me or Basic D&D. Like Beck Me Basic D&D feels very similar to Mork Bork because Mork Bork or Merk Bork is based very heavily on the idea of l less rules, keeping it simple, um, your character is your gear, okay? And then, again, I would say in terms of dark and depressing, like you don't get more dark and depressing than Warhammer 40,000, okay? And Dark Heresy is definitely that. So it's very much a, a mix of those two. Now, as a player... I know what people are saying. Well, there's, there's no point me liking the idea because I'm never going to be able to convince a, people to play this game. Play it as a one-shot and see how they feel about it. Surprisingly, we found that very few people when we played our one-shot or two-shot, and I guess in many respects, we played two sessions or one and a half sessions of this. Very few of us actually died. Okay? Very few of us actually died. I thought I was going to die all the time because I, I had... S so few hit points. Some of us were rocking around with one hit point. It was, it was, it's possible to have it happen. Like you can wind up with very few hit points in this game, and yet you still aren't dead because you play smart. You play differently. You don't, you don't get reckless. You don't assume that you can win every fight. You solve problems different ways. So this game, okay, try it as a one shot. See what they feel like. It's actually very simple to play. Anyway, okay. Um, I'm going to finish up this poll here and end it there. Um, and I'm going to disappear pretty early today. I'm not going to go for the whole hour or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to sort of let people know you have six more weeks of me going over Mork Bork, different classes, where to find things, how to lay it out, uh, and we'll build those classes and characters on a live stream. And um, hopefully that means that people will try something new, try something that they're not used to, go out of their comfort zone.
You do not need to advertise that you would like to play more Bork or Merc book. All you need to do is just write down the, the character creation process and just tell them what to do. They'll be done in, in no time. You, you'll be able to do this in you know, 10, 15 minutes if people are paying attention. And fill out a character sheet like this, it's not hard. Of course, it's got the word Mork Bork written all over it, but you don't have to necessarily use that character sheet. You could use a different character sheet. Okay. Uh, all right. So I thought uh, that was a... Um, I'm looking forward to this. I'm hoping this opens people's up, um, and people's uh, minds up to the op opportunity of playing something a little bit different for a little bit more of a, a less of a, a vanilla D&D &D or a vanilla fantasy. Uh, we're dealing with something a bit darker and then there's... The stakes are quite high, so, you know. Um, huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really do appreciate your um, your support. And uh, without you, I could not keep doing this. I want to thank Stuart, you know who you are, for sending me the Mork Bork or Merk Bork book. I uh, really do appreciate that. Thank you for taking part in the poll, uh, particularly for those people who've been listening and watching. But the people who've been commenting in the chat, Fred Huber, who's a patron, Derp, who's a patron, uh, Damien, who's been um, providing some feedback and rolling dice for us, thank you so much for being here. I also want a big, big thank you to um, now. Will I get this name right? <laughs> Naku Kun. I don't know if I got your name right, but if I did, great. And Dungeon Master Josh, who's played Mork Bork or Merk Bork with me, for jumping into the chat too. Thank you to all of you who've been commenting. Uh, rolling dice and generally um, hanging out with me and Roxa Zero I forgot about Roxa Zero and Dave Rosser Dave Rosser that's right so thank you to everybody and look wherever you are in the world whether it be the morning the afternoon the night or the wee wee early morning please look after yourself your family and your friends be nice to your neighbours hey maybe try a different role playing game like Mork Bork or Merk Bork you never know until next time keep rolling those 20s